I'm here with my good friend Marissa and today we're going to talk to you about a topic that's really important to both of us that is veils. <laughs> <laughs> I started wearing a veil four years ago and it wasn't at a Latin mass, it wasn't at a traditional mass, it was actually at a charismatic retreat that I went on um, and so I didn't realize that this was uh, sort of a traditional practice until much later. Marissa, when did you start wearing your veil? Okay, so I got my veil a year ago, but I actually didn't start wearing it until this past summer. So today we wanted to come on here and share with you some of the theological, practical, and spiritual reasons why we think that you should veil and why we were convinced to start veiling ourselves. If you're not familiar with veiling, um, it's a practice that was done mostly before the Second Vatican Council. It was very common. It was actually required for women to cover their heads in some way. So women could wear mantillas or different kind, different styles of veils, or they could wear hats, that sort of thing. And after the Second Vatican Council, for reasons that we'll discuss later, that practice fell out of use, but Today, it's actually becoming more popular, especially among young Catholics and young traditional Catholics. So when I started wearing a veil, I had no idea of the history of this practice. I knew that it had been done before. Um, I didn't realize that it was kind of making a, a statement. I didn't realize that it was um, a partisan issue. So a couple days ago, I was actually reflecting on when I began veiling and how uh, I began to run into certain prejudices that people had about veiling. And so I had no idea that I would be considered judgmental or rigid or something like that for wearing a veil. But that was sort of the reaction that I started to get from priests and from other Catholic friends. I was the kind of person who just jumped into veiling and dealt with the consequences later. But for Marissa, <laughs> it was a little different. A different yeah. Do you want to talk about what you, um, what qualms you had about veiling? Yeah. Okay. Should I hold it? Yeah, or, go ahead. Okay. Um, yes. So when I first saw people veiling, it was when I first came to St. Thomas. Um, Emily and I lived right across the hall from each other. Um, we went to mass together. And so she started wearing a veil freshman year. Um, and so I saw her doing that. I saw a couple of my friends doing it. And I was like, okay, like, that's cool. I didn't really understand it. And I was like, all right, they can do that. Not for me. Um, yes. Yeah, so our junior year, Emily and I became roommates. And so we got closer. And I don't really know, like, how it came up. Uh, maybe it's just because we were around each other a lot more, but I started thinking about veiling and I also, um, other people started talking about veiling to me um, and people would ask like, oh, like, why don't you veil or like your friends veil? Um, so I started thinking about it more and then last year, I think it was like last December, I went as far as like actually buying a veil um, and I still didn't really know why. I was just kind of like, all right, like this seems like a very like reverent thing to do. Um, and so I had a veil for the longest time and sometimes I would wear it, like if it felt right, um, other times I wouldn't. And I think like my biggest issue was I felt like I was being judged by people um, because at St. Thomas, not very many people wore veils. So I kind of felt uncomfortable. Um, and then, but I would go to Latin mass and there I felt comfortable wearing it because everyone wore it. So I was kind of like going back and forth for a long time. Um, and then I did that for a couple months. Uh, and then Emily and I went to Italy and I was still like, I didn't wear it all the time in Italy. No, um, not at first. Yeah, not at first. Like I was, I would kind of pick and choose where to wear it. Um, but then over the summer, that's when, or this past summer, that's when I started wearing it consistently. Um, and I think it's just because I started really reflecting on it more. Um, so I started realizing how beautiful it was to uh, wear a veil. Um, and I really felt like God was calling me to start doing it consistently. Do you feel like you were pressured into buying a veil? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Um, so pressured probably isn't the right word. Um, I think there was a lot of influences, um, just like a lot of people that I knew were doing it and I saw how beautiful it was. Um, so even though I didn't fully understand it at the time, it was something that I chose to do on my own. So the practice of veiling has a history that goes all the way back to the Jewish tradition. Um, 
But for us Catholics, the basis, the scriptural basis for veiling comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. So, Marissa, can you please read it for us? Yes, I can. All right, um, so 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4 says, Any man who prays or prophesies with his head covered dishonors his head, but any woman who prays or prophesies with her head unveiled dishonors her head. It is the same as if her head were shaven. For if a woman will not veil herself, then she should cut off her hair. But if it is disgraceful for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her wear a veil. So these are really strong words. And how many of you have ever heard like a priest preach about this verse in mass? <laughs> Probably, <not. laughs> Probably no one. <laughs> that is the scriptural basis for veiling. Um, it's also, it not only has a scriptural basis, but also has a basis in tradition. Because if we're, if you are a Catholic as we are, um, you practice your religion based on scripture and tradition. And there are some who say that this tradition was abolished with the new code of canon law. So, Marissa, can you explain the change in the can code of canon law to us, please? Yes. Um, so, basically, in uh, 19, the 1917 code of canon law, okay, so the 1917 code of canon law says that women should be veiled in the, when they're in the presence of the Blessed Sacrament. But okay, um, and then in the 1980s, uh, Pope John Paul II updated the canon law, and in that one, there um, the code of canon law doesn't say anything about women wearing veils. So according to the 1983 code of canon law, uh, women are no longer required to wear veils. Um, so now it's just a matter of preference. There's also a beautiful uh, symbolism and theology behind veiling things in the Catholic faith. So for example, um, some things that were veiled. Okay. Um, so, for example, um, like in the Old Testament, the Ark of the Covenant was veiled. Um, Christ's body, when it's in the tomb, is veiled. Um, during Mass, the tabernacle and the altar are veiled. Um, the, chalice the, the chalice is veiled. Is veiled. Mm -hmm. So the church has, a like, ever since the Old Testament, has always um, kind of held to the tradition of covering things that are holy and sacred. Um, and It's a sign of their dignity, right? Right, it's a sign of their dignity. It's a sign of um, their sacredness. So Alice von Hildebrand, who's a wonderful philosopher, wrote about how the reason that women t traditionally veil is because they have a great mystery and dignity in their femininity. And like all things that are shrouded in mystery, we veil them to protect their dignity. The third aspect of veiling that we wanted to talk about <laughs> is, yeah, peripheral vision. It keeps <laughs> no, you focused during mass. It keeps you focused, <laughs> the spiritual benefits. So wearing a veil is an act of reverence because you're pointing to the real presence of Jesus in the blessed sacrament but it also can benefit you in your own personal spiritual life by helping you focus on that reality. So for me, I have an issue with being distracted uh, during prayer and during mass. So wearing a veil helps me to focus in on what is happening and to, it, places me, it places me in the right frame of mind and reminds me that I am in a holy place when Moses came into the presence of the burning bush, he removed his shoes to show that that was holy, a holy place. For me, I put on my veil the moment I walk into any chapel or church where the real presence is held. And that is a sign, and that is how I acknowledge the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. And I don't remove my veil until I've left the doors of the church. Traditionally, women who are married would wear black veils, and women who are unmarried would wear white veils. But nowadays, um, I've seen women wearing almost every single color of veils. And you can find any color veil uh, for sale online. I've even seen, like, lime green, lime green, really? and neon colors, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a matter of preference, but also I would encourage you um, not to make yourself the center of attention when you wear a veil, because you have to remember that this action is between you and God, and you're doing it for him. So Marissa, because Marissa's not married, wears a white veil, as is traditional. The reason why uh, that's a good idea is it helps the uh, guys find out who the cute Catholic single girls are. <laughs> Thank you, Adrian. <laughs> there is so much more that we could say about veiling and the theology and history behind it, but we're running out of time. So if, if this is something that y'all are interested in, we can make another video and go more in depth. And please, if you have any questions, comment below and we'll do our best to answer them in our next video. Thank you all so much for watching. And Marissa, thank you so much for helping me out today. Of course. <laughs> Bye everyone. Thanks for watching. And how the kingdom of God
God is open to everyone. You know, <laughs> oh, okay. I'm gonna pretend. Okay. I'm gonna. Emily, tell me what you just did to my pasta. Yeah. <laughs>